you for tuning into another edition of Joy in Our Town. I'm your host, Angela Brown, and I'm joined today by Senator Donald Norcross. He is of New Jersey's 5th Legislative District, and we are talking about jobs and how to generate more mm. of them in New Jersey. Good, good news. <laughs> uh, we hope so. Uh, listen, anybody who's unemployed, that's one too many, so we're yeah. working to try to get everybody back to work. But first, tell us a little bit about the district that you represent and how long have you been in this Senate seat? I'm in my first full term. Okay. I, I took over when then uh, Senator Red became Mayor Red and mm. created a vacancy and I'm fulfilling the end of uh, her term okay. and running for re-election this year. In a very challenging time. Uh, certainly anybody who's turned on a TV set or picked up a, a newspaper knows that uh, what they see going on in Washington is right. just not the way we want to do business. Mm -hmm. uh, we have our disagreements in Trenton and we have a uh, fierce debate, but it, it's, it's toned to the level of we all understand we have to get something done here, yeah. that we're pragmatists. We can argue all we want, but we have to get something done right. to move the state forward. Right. And that's where we're going. And in the end, it's about people, and we can't do business the way that things have been done. But at the same time, there's a lot of businesses that are no longer in operation because uh, of the challenges of this economy, and people are losing jobs. So how is New Jersey faring as it relates to unemployment? Well, unemployment in New Jersey last month ticked up about a tenth of percent, mm. 9.4 to 9.5. It's uh, about a half a percentage point over what the national average is. Okay. But the fact of the matter is whether it's 9.2 or 9.5, it's too much. Mm -hmm. And those folks who are seeking employment just aren't getting the opportunities. Uh, this past week we went through a tremendous uh, fluctuation of the uh, stock market. Mm -hmm. uh, four and five hundred point swings and it was just horrible. And that's not instilling confidence right. to those managers, to those owners to, to hire people. So we have to get uh, some stability going here. And that all stemmed from the fighting that was going on in Washington. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't think that was healthy for our economy or our nation. Mm -hmm. But do you think that's the only factor? I mean, when sometimes I travel around New Jersey and I live in New Jersey, I see so many once thriving communities that are just a series of abandoned businesses. So it looks like people mm -hmm. are going out of business as a result of some of the challenges confronting our current economy. So are there many businesses still in in operation in New Jersey that while there are some fears about hiring people, are there businesses that actually are in a, a position to do some of the hiring right now? Well, there are. There okay. is some good news in, in this climate. Um, we have plenty of bad news, but there's good news moving forward. In where I live in Camden City and my district was a very urban and suburban area that was a, an industrial base. Mm -hmm. That's changed over the last 25, 30 years mm -hmm. from an industrial sector where we had the big manufacturers of RCA, Campbell Soup, the shipyard and all. And that's changed into a service sector where the hospitals and the data centers and uh, items like that are now the driving force. But the economy in South Jersey is also driven by Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. And over the course of the last uh, year, uh, we've been able to do a number of things in the legislature that enables Atlantic City to really take off. Okay. And that helps drive our economy. Even though it's on the other coast, it's still many people in our district work in Atlantic City. Yeah, I mean, it's all interrelated. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so we can't take that competitive mentality where you, know, you want to invest in particular communities because it really does take a community coming together, the entire state, to really, really address this real challenge of uh, growing unemployment employment rate. So what are some of the legislative activities that you are involved in to address this issue? Uh, there was a bill that the governor just signed within the last month called the uh, transit bill. Okay. Which uh, addresses and encourages those areas right around uh, transit hubs, whether it's the Paco Speed Line or one of our other uh, light rails that uh, gives incentives for businesses to grow and prosper mm. right at the train stations so that people can use mass transit and live close to it. Okay, that's great. And then New Jersey First Act, tell us a little bit about that. Yes, this was one of the first bills I introduced mm. upon being sworn in that says very simply, 
if there's a public entity, whether you're the state, the county, or local, any part of New Jersey, that when you go to hire, you have to hire New Jersey residents first. Mm. We love our friends from Pennsylvania right. and Delaware, New York, but you know what? We love New Jersey more mm. and that we have a great town pool and we just think that when a public entity goes to hire, this is common sense, we go to our own people first mm -hmm. and that goes into effect September 1st okay. and uh, we're hoping that uh, people have a different mindset, that we have great talent and we should go to us first. So they work and live in New Jersey. Absolutely. And generate so, some local dollars And for that New Jersey. when they go home, they take their paycheck, they're spending it in New Jersey for New Jersey hospitals and retail establishments mm. and food centers. Again, New Jersey comes first and that's what we're trying to do. Well, I would imagine you have to get really, really aggressive with those staggering statistics. You might have to push up your sleeves and really, really go to work. So not only are you responsible for that bill, you also are involved in the Penn Ben bill. Tell us a little bit about the Pen Penn Ben bill. Pension benefit bill, which was recently passed uh, with bipartisan support, uh, garnered a great deal of attention. Mm. The pension system in New Jersey for our employees has uh, crashed and burned. Mm. It went from 107% overfunding within the last decade down to 50% funding. Mm -hmm. So promises were made by both parties, governors over the last 10 years, and the system has continued to crash. Mm. To the and that's not just a New Jersey issue. This is happening across the country, correct? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's not, but ours is probably just a little bit more severe because okay. they would not address it. Senate President Sweeney over six years ago brought this to our attention when it, the problem was bad, but it wasn't catastrophic. The problem is here we are today and I was sworn in a little over a year ago and we walked in to see a pension system that was just horribly broke. Mm -hmm. That it wasn't being funded properly from the, our government standpoint, we weren't funding it and it was being underfunded from the other side of the equation. We had a very, very tough decision to make. Mm -hmm. Much discussion and uh, had taken place here over the course of the years. We couldn't kick the can down the road, as they say, any further. Okay. If we didn't act on it now, the pensions for over half a million people was at risk. Okay. So we made that tough decision and we're, we're fixing the pension system and the health system for the first time in over a decade. Okay, so what do you see is the process for fixing this pension? Because this has the potential to bankrupt states. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know, unions are not going to just come along quietly or cooperatively in some instances. The opposition that you face was from some of those public union employees that want to make sure, sure that their pension is in place. So what do you perceive to be the course of action to address this very, very real issue? Well. Both sides have to, and they did, come to the table. At the end, not everybody was happy, but uh, I can look anybody in the eye and say, your pension will be there. Okay. So the employees have to contribute more. The state, for the first time, is mandated to make their pension payment. And there are a number on the health side of uh, committees that will be put together with labor management to address what benefits that they're allowed to have and what they can afford to have. Mm -hmm. And that's really important because, you know, it, both sides of the equation uh, were at fault here. Uh, government didn't fully fund what they were supposed to, mm -hmm. and they had some tremendous uh, increases in payouts over the year. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't that we wanted to do it, we had a math problem that nobody wanted mm -hmm. to address. Okay. And if we didn't do it now, we were in jeopardy that their pension system would be bankrupt. Mm. Then nobody would have it. Yeah, and, I and that was unacceptable. Yeah, that's an interesting dynamic because you know the Recovery Act funds, a lot of those dollars were invested in construction as a way to spur you know job creation and economic development, but a lot of people who went to work were union employees. So I would imagine it's a really, really um, interesting balancing act that you have to watch and be mindful of in order to ensure that you're not contributing to <laughs> not being able to pay the 
the very pension that you're hoping to perhaps modify because of the challenges that you have funding the pension? Well, I was elected by all the people in my district, just not a special interest group. Yeah. So I owe it to the employees to make sure what they were promised is going to be there, that they'll have the health insurance, that they'll have their pension when they go to retire. Because yeah. people plan their entire lives yeah. for retirement. And if we had continued going, and not made a change, mm -hmm. it would not be there. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's unacceptable. Mm -hmm. But on the other side of the equation is, we're all parts of this. Yeah. Everybody who lives in New Jersey pays taxes. Yeah. We have to be able to afford to pay the taxes. If not, there's not going to be any money there to pay the pension. Mm -hmm. So it's a balance. It's a very difficult balance, but yeah. we had to, that's what we're elected to do, is, is make those tough decisions, right. not just uh, avoid them. Right, and right now it's the best of times and worst of times, so um, I'm looking forward to seeing some really positive, innovative solutions to some of these challenges. That's what has made our country so great, and hopefully you're the leader to get the job done. <laughs> well, uh, we'll play our part, but again, it's a matter of working together, not just with the Senate or right. the Assembly, but it's also with the governor to make those decisions right. that moves our state forward, that puts people back to work. I mean, that's so important. The best social program is a job, yeah. a job with benefits that pays well. Yeah. So that's what our focus is going to be on. Right, that contributes to the quality of life for the entire state, all that live there. So what are some of the other um, initiatives that you are actively involved in to grow jobs in New Jersey? Uh, we have something called the Meds and Eds in Camden mm -hmm. City that uh, works well there. Uh, which is growing. We have a brand new medical school coming into the city and an expansion of Rutgers and Rowan University along with Camden County College. And with the growth of those institutions around them, there are new homes being built, uh, market rate homes for the first time, businesses are starting to open up around there. It becomes a, a really a hotbed. And then we move down to our more rural area where the improvement authorities have been able to give the encouragement where new businesses are opening up. There, we have a, uh, a program going on right now, it's called the Total Turf Experience, a brand new complex of soccer fields mm. and down in Mantua that we're really uh, happy to see that going. New entrepreneurs taking a chance, investing in their community, working with kids, it's a big win for all of us. Absolutely, and New Jersey is the Garden State, so hopefully they will become known for growing jobs instead of just tomatoes, right? <laughs> Absolutely, we love our tomatoes, <laughs> we love our jobs more, and uh, we're looking forward yeah, to that. Yeah, they're very, very needed. So thank you so much for shedding light on this very important topic. How can viewers get more information? They can first uh, call us at any time, 856-547-4800 mm -hmm. is our office, or they can visit us on the web at uh, www.njledge5.com. Um, we'll be happy to help them. We really put a lot of emphasis on what we call customer service. Those constituents are our customers, and we'll do whatever we can to help them. And I wish you much success in your quest to help them. Thank you so much for being with us today.